Kia are determined to keep dominating the car market with their brand new car offerings. And there's no other sector that Kia performed better in than the family car sector. But there was one vehicle which was starting to look just a little bit dated, but no longer. That is the Kia Nero. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you around the hybrid Nero, not the plug-in, just the hybrid. And I've already covered the Kia Nero EV over on Electrohead. So if you want to see that, I'll pop it in the description box down below. And I've also listened to you guys as well. Last time I did the Sportage review, you said that you liked it, but you didn't want to see the top spec model, which cost over £40,000. You wanted to see the entry level affordable car. So here it is. This is the version two. This is the entry level Nero. Doesn't look like an entry level car, does it? And in today's video, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know about this vehicle. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you do like new car news and new car content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay, so let's talk about that styling because it makes one hell of a statement, doesn't it? It's not quite as handsome as the Kia EV6. And I don't think I like it quite as much as the new Kia Sportage. But actually, it's pretty smart in its own right. It gets its own light signatures at the front here, which are actually finished in this little design, which is supposed to look like a heartbeat monitor. Quite nice, actually, isn't it? You've also got some contrasting styling along the front of the grille and along the bottom of the splitter as well. Now, you do have to remember, this is the entry level car. And I'll show you the top spec car as well, because that looks just a bit smarter. But actually, this is pretty nice. It also gets 16 inch alloy wheels as standard. Not the biggest, but they're a really nice smart design, aren't they? Often in entry level cars, you get some really boring alloys, but not here. You've got a lovely two-tone design. I may have been undecided about the front of the new Nero, but what I do know is I love its side profile. It looks really smart. And I'm gonna say it again, and this is gonna get boring, but this is the entry level model. And I really like it because of its contrasting details. You've got the chrome that surrounds the windows. You've got those gloss black roof rails. And then you've also got this kind of matte black skid plate along the bottom and across the wheel arches. It all just looks quite smart. You've also got this part here, which is actually a physical air vent to aid with your aerodynamics. But you might be wondering, Where's that funny coloured rear quarter panel that I keep seeing on the new Nero? Well, actually, that rear quarter panel is only available on the top spec car. So if you go for the entry level car like this one, it will be colour coded. And then I think it looks much better. The new Nero is pretty much bigger all round. It's the same height, but it's also wider, longer, and that gives you a ton more interior space. The back of the Nero is probably my least favourite part. That's not to say I don't like it, I just don't think the styling is as sharp as the front and the side. I do like the new light signatures. You've got these boomerang designs, which actually, when paired together with the brake light, which runs along the top of the spoiler, looks quite smart. I also really like the reflective lights at the bottom, which mirror that of the daytime running lights at the front. The good news is, because the Nero has grown in width and length, it gets more boot space than ever before. Inside here, you'll find 451 litres, which is really competitive. And it's also very versatile as well. You've got an adjustable boot floor with some additional storage underneath, and even more if you don't go for the spare wheel. You do have a bit of a load lip, even when it's in its highest position, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. At first, I didn't really like this flimsy parcel shelf. I thought it felt cheap. But then I realised it does have its pros. And that's the fact that you can store it pretty much anywhere because you can actually almost fold it up without ruining it. The rear seats only might split in 60-40, but when you lay them down, they're actually completely flat, which gives you a really good loading space. 
thanks to that added length and height, I've got loads more room in the back here. This seat is set to my seating position and I might not be the tallest at 5'5", five five, but I've got tons of leg room. I could happily sit behind a six foot person. I've got a lot of headroom as well. Plus amenities are decent back here. I've got a pull out armrest with two cup holders. I've got the USB-C charge ports in the back of the seats, just like on the EV6. I also get a bit of storage as well on this back seat. Now it is only on this seat and not on this one, but it does mean that if you've got kids, they can pop some items in there. Plus, the floor tunnel is really low as well. So that means if somebody's sitting in the middle, they're not gonna have to have their knees up really high. It's ultra practical. Okay, it's not the widest. So free people would really be a squeeze. But thanks to that low load tunnel, I think it means that though it'd be a squeeze, it definitely wouldn't be impossible. The only thing that would have been nice that some rivals get is either a sliding rear bench or reclining seats. As a car journalist, I'm often spoiled with the cars that I get to drive. More often than not, brands will put you in their brand new top of the range vehicle. So when you get in an entry level car, sometimes you're a little bit disappointed, but not here. The more I prod and poke around, the more I realize this is a very good value for money. You get things like a nice leather wrapped steering wheel, Okay, it's not real leather, but it feels like it. And you've also got a leather armrest as well. It also gets things like adaptive cruise control and lane assist. Adaptive cruise control. Did you know that I'm currently driving the Audi e-tron GT? That's £110,000 and it doesn't get adaptive cruise control as standard. And yet you have it in this sub £30,000 Kia Nero. Yes, okay, prices have actually gone up over the years, but this offers a hybrid system which will save you money on fuel and also a ton of specification. The only things that let it down very slightly is the screens aren't quite as nice as in the higher spec models or the Kia EV6. They give you the illusion that you've got the same screens, but actually inside you've got some slightly smaller, not quite so HD screens, but everything works very well on them as well. This two level car gets DAB radio, it gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you get Bluetooth, so you get most of the things that you will need. And of course, you don't get a map as standard with your sat nav, but you can run it through your Apple CarPlay instead. Something I am really pleased to see though, is even on the entry level car, it gets the cool switchable screen underneath the infotainment screen. And if anyone's ever watched any of my Kia videos, you'll be fed up with how much I love this. But I really do think this is a clever little system. You get some physical dials where you can control your climate control dials, which again is dual zone in this entry level car. You can put it on auto climate or you can press and you can switch the screen and then it controls your radio controls. Then you've got a physical volume control button and you've got a physical tuner as well. That's great, isn't it? Elsewhere, fit and finish is okay. It isn't amazing, but again, I don't think many people would expect it to be. You've got a textured dashboard up top. It is quite hard, but because it's textured, it kind of makes it look a bit nicer than just a real hard plastics. You've also got some nice gloss black, which runs along the center of the car. Now, in some of the higher spec models, this is actually lit up with ambient lighting, and that does look so much nicer. But again, it's the entry level car, so having ambient lighting may not be that important to some people. You've also got lots of storage as well. You've got some nice cup holders here, which do have the pop out function which I love it makes them really usable and it means that when you're not using the cup holders you can put other things in that center console as well you've got somewhere to store your phone at the front of the car you've got a nice big glove box now you haven't got the biggest door cards but I think there's enough storage elsewhere to for that to not be too much of a problem these seats are also really nice as well. Now they might be cloth, but they have got a nice detail on them, which makes them look a bit more interesting. And they're quite bolstered as well. These do not feel cheap. The only thing I don't like 
is those weird headrests. The three flavours of Nero Hybrid are the version I'm featuring called the 2, starting from 27745, undercutting the Toyota CHR, but around £1,000 more than the Renault Arcana. The version 3 throws in things like wireless charging, heated seats and a heated steering wheel, rear privacy glass and those front sensors, but it tips the 30k mark. Finally, the tip-top of the range car will cost nearly another £3,000, but this does throw in Harman Kardon sound system, electric powered assisted boot, head-up display and a few more options that I'm about to highlight. I've quickly grabbed the keys to the top specification 4 model so I can show you what going for the top spec car gets you over the entry level. Now for a starter this is finished in the beautiful cityscape green but that's not exclusive to the top spec model you can get it on all of the specifications of Nero and it will cost you just under £600. You've also got fog lights which are integrated into the grille. And this grille is actually finished in gloss black compared to the matte plastic that you get on the entry level car. And that's also included around the windscreen, along the top of the bonnet and also underneath the door mirrors as well. You also get 18 inch alloy wheels on this top spec model. You do get a little C shaped indicator light. And of course, around the back, you also get that gloss black rear quarter panel. Now what's changed inside? Inside, there's quite a few changes. You get a sunroof, although it doesn't reach all the way back to the rear passengers. You get electrically adjusted seats. They're also finished in a leather, which is recycled, not proper leather, but it's used from recycled materials and they do feel higher quality. You also get a new center console with a different gear selector. I far prefer the gear selector in this car. You also get keyless entry and start with a nice fancy start stop button and you get extra buttons which give you extra specification. Things like heated seats, cooled seats, you get a heated steering wheel and of course you also get a larger infotainment screen as well. And overall the materials that are used on the dashboard are much nicer and you also get some ambient lighting. Visibility is pretty good all round, however those rear pillars are quite large so over the shoulder view isn't the best. However the good news is that every version of the Kia Nero gets a rear view camera and rear parking sensors. And then as you move up the lines you also get front parking sensors so I'd be worried if you still had problems parking the Nero. The new hybrid Nero takes the existing 1.6 litre petrol hybrid engine and it's just refined it slightly. It makes it slightly better on a fuel economy and just overall a lot nicer to drive. It prioritises your electric driving at low speeds around town. So if you do short journeys, it's a real delight to drive. If you need a bit more power, pop your foot down and as the petrol engine kicks in, you do get a slight grumble. You get 139 brake horsepower in this hybrid engine, which is pretty good actually. And it beats a lot of rivals, smaller one litre engines, which will do around 100 brake horsepower. The gearbox is a delight as well. And it's a real contrast from the recent Hyundai Tucson that I've driven. Yes, okay, that vehicle was much larger and it had a slightly more powerful engine, but the gearbox was very notchy. You felt it continually changing gears. However, in the Nero, it's fast mover. I would confidently say that the Nero hybrid has more than enough power for most people's journeys. The only time that you might need a little bit more is if you carry a load of people often. So if you have a larger family, two teenagers in the back, maybe someone in the passenger seat, then you might need something like the plug-in hybrid. This has a bit more power from a larger battery. It will drive solely on electric, but it'll also have that electric instant torque that we're used to. So pulling off with a car that's loaded would be a lot easier. The Nero Hybrid claims to achieve in upwards of 50 miles per gallon, almost 60, which is really impressive. And that should be achievable for most people as long as you're doing shorter journeys. 
Of course, it's never going to be as cheap to run as the fully electric version or the plug-in hybrid if you're doing shorter journeys. But if you don't have access to a wall box or fully electric is not viable, then this is a fantastic option if you want to save some money on your fuel costs. Refinement on this entry level car, it's not great. There's a little bit of road noise. It's a little bit bumpy at low speeds. But once you've got the radio on, I don't think it's anything that's gonna concern you. These seats are very comfortable as well for an entry level car. Shut up about the entry level car, Tisha. But seriously, they're quite cushioned. They hold you in in corners. Not that you're going to be attacking corners in this car. It's not a B-road car. The steering is not particularly sharp, but it's nice and light. It's easy to maneuver around town and that's what it's designed for. If you did want sharp steering, then you could go for Skoda or Seat, which are actually slightly cheaper, but you won't get the fuel economy or the standard specification that you'll get from the Nero. I'm starting to sound a little bit like a stuck record, but Kia have pulled it out the bag once again. They've taken what was quite a plain and boring SUV. They've given it a striking exterior, a really nice plush interior, and also a shed load of technology that makes this a hard SUV to beat. But what do you guys think? Do you like the new Nero or maybe you preferred what it looked like previously? Is there another SUV that you'd pick over the Nero? And if so, why? Let me know down below. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more car reviews on this channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching guys. And until next time, see you later.